Good morning. He's arrived. She's arrived. Yes. The location we're at, at first glance, seems to offer many, many compositions. Do you think? I don't want to go to show you. It doesn't matter how beautiful a place is. It's not necessarily a composition. And it's quite easy to get frustrated and start stamping. But Mrs. Frustrated here. I have wandered around with the long lens. I've wandered around with the wide angle. I've wandered around with the 17 to 55. Excuse me, my backside's getting wet. And I cannot, for me, find a composition that I'm happy with. But there's all these lone trees. I, I, there's something wrong in the world when we can't get a composition with a lone tree. It is, I mean, in fairness, they're not the most photogenic of trees, although there is one behind the camera. I've just taken a HDR panorama of it, getting Ingleton, Ingleton, Ingleborough. Uh, Ingleborough, I think, Ingleborough. is that one. In the background, which yeah. I was going to climb, but I'm not. And there's snow on the hills. I'll, I'll give you a spin round in a bit. <laughs> but we've got Ingleborough over here. We've got Twistleton Scar over there somewhere. Ribblehead Viaduct back down the way. And this mass of limestone pavement. And I can't find an image. I think we are going to just go a bit further on towards Ingleborough. Because there are some other patches of limestone around mm. there. If it doesn't work, it's a scouting trip. I mean, we've been here since, what, about half past seven we arrived. Yeah. yeah. I had a good walk around. We walked off that way, we walked down that way. And looking at it with my eyes, I was going, oh, that's a nice tree. There's a lovely shape. It's got a nice background. There was what looked like a nice long lens shot with Ingleborough in the background and a, an odd shaped tree in the front. But the minute I got the camera out, it just went to pop. I don't know if you've had any more success this morning than me. I've not had a lot, to be honest. I've just taken one series of panoramas, which I'll have a look at. I've tried to frame it with a tree in on the curve of Ingra in the background because it is covered in mist and it's got a lovely frosting of mm. snow. Very it's frustrating. Early. It's early. It is, and the nice thing about winter photography, especially on an overcast day like this, although there is... This was not meant to happen, blue sky and sunshine coming through. Oh, I hate the weather forecasters. The, the, the weather, with it, as the weather as it is, the light tends to stay soft all day, pretty much all day. So you can continue shooting. And my intention for today had been black and white anyway. I don't know what yours. Absolutely, there's no, there's no real colour. No. And I'm certainly not going to start to, oh, the saturation in post processing because that'll just, that'll take away the mode. The mode is black and white. Yeah. It's cold and bleak and barren. But having said that, we should have had frost and it was two and a half degrees and no sign of frost at all this morning. But there's some colour coming up over there now. Across the top of what I believe is Twistleton Scar. And the clouds are breaking up and there's blue sky up there. And that's fine, I can live with blue sky if we get the light that comes with it to put some light on these rocks, on this limestone and on the trees. But if we don't get that, then the images are going to stay black and white. So we're going to go for a wander and we'll catch up with you guys in a bit. See you. Well, we've been out shooting virtually all day. Uh, Dan's come up and met us, and he took me to see some squidges. It's really good. They're so cute. So hold the fire. Don't switch off after I say goodbye. There's some extra shots on there. Well, we've walked for what seems like miles. We now have... I'm not sure. That's Twistleton Scar area over there, I think. And we have Ingleton behind us, which is where the sun is coming up. You can see I've disappeared, I've gone into shadow. And the focus point 
if you can make it out, is a little tree. And I can't see what I'm pointing at here because the sun's shining right in my eyes. There's a little tree over here somewhere with the hill in the background and the cloud just sitting on the top and the light. And Andy and I have set up almost in an identical spot. And I'm getting increasingly frustrated because the image I can see Andy taking and we're at almost the same settings is far, far better than what I'm getting. And I don't understand why. Olympus. <laughs> yeah, apparently it's Olympus versus Nikon. Yeah. Morning. 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 So we've talked through some things, some settings. We're both on roughly the same f-stop. We're both on the same ISO. We are both on the same white balance, almost the same um, focal length. I'm shooting the 70 to 200. And he's got the, uh, what is it, 35 to 120 or something. It's an Olympus lens anyway. We're both using pretty much the same filters and I cannot get an image that to me is worthy of putting on the computer. It's really frustrating. And even more frustrating is the fact I can see an image is there to be had. Very strange. But we're going to keep going. I will not give up. So we set this composition up. You saw it first. I saw the tree, but I didn't see the composition. And you are having, from my, my point of view, we are having far more success taking the same image that I'm taking. And it's really frustrating. What attracted you to this particular composition? I'm trying to show people, but I can't see because I'm being blinded. There's a tree over here. And then we've got the hill in the background. It's often difficult to articulate what you like about a photograph. As we crossed the brow, I saw this single lone tree on top of the limestone. What drew me to it was the top of the tree is quite curved and it worked well at the time with the clouds on the mountain at the back, which were also curved. I've shot square format, uh, four by three. I've done panoramas, but I didn't overthink it. If you overthink it, it becomes difficult and your brain just goes. It's a lovely tree. It's got some lovely mm. character. It is. It's beautiful. Some lovely curves in it. Yeah, it's a lovely shape. And like you say, it mirrors. I'm sorry if you can't see this, but I really can't see where I'm pointing this thing. The shape of the tree almost mirrors the hill in the background. And it's so frustrating that you're getting what I consider to be a cracking image, but set up next to you using pretty much the same composition and the same settings, I can't replicate it. But I refuse to sell my Nikon. <laughs> it's not the Olympus effect. It's, a, it's Olympus. <laughs> Sometimes you just don't see a mm. photograph. On this occasion, maybe that's what's causing it. I can see there's an image there, but what I see in the camera, as opposed to what I see with my eyes, are two completely different things. And it's changing. It's not as good now as it was earlier no. on. The sun's fully risen, there was a bit of warm light on it. And what you had, you had the dark tree against the white cloud, the white mm. side of the background. Well, after much searching, I found the location that I wanted. And this is courtesy of James Burns, who I absolutely adore. I think his work is, is marvellous. I love his vlogging style. I'll pop a link up here and down there. So thanks, James. You've been a star helping me to get here. Now, I've actually found the composition that James did. So I'm just aware you can't see me. I found the, co the composition that James actually did. But I found another one which is slightly different, although in the same thing. I am... Um, Sorry, I've just had a, a nutty bar. It's in my teeth. I'm set up in a slightly precarious position. I'm going to tilt that down. The tripod is at all sorts of um, strange angles. And I want to try and show you what I'm doing without knocking it out of position because it, <laughs> it's a bit of a balancing act of getting it there. It is going to be a mono image. Oh, and there are holes all over the place. And it will have the PP done on it to within an inch of its life. You can see I've got a tree here, and there's another tree over here, and a third tree over here. 
we have this amazing limestone pavement but there's little bushes as I, I I can't see if you can see this because I'm being blinded by the sun at the moment with the little bushes peeking up from everywhere so they're going to get cloned out which I haven't got a problem with doing I suspect we're going to have a very heavy vignette put around the edges because the bit that I want let's see if I can show you this the image starts at this V here I'm probably not showing you yeah there's a a rock that has a V or it's, I'm, I'm, I'm shooting at its pointy edge and it just leads you straight into the three trees and we're now getting some decent cloud which is a bonus because the sky went completely clear at one point so we've got some nice moving clouds we've got some beautiful light on the trees I've popped the polarizer on it's not really the right angle to put the polarizer on but I wanted to get some of the glare off these rocks not all of it just a little bit it's actually darkened down the sky which is working in my favor I'm shooting at f14 and I'm at 30th of a second I'm trying a focus stack first of all because I am shooting in portrait and I've got the camera tilted down at quite a severe angle Let me get back over here these rocks are quite slippery in places so that is what my camera is seeing and I'm there and I think yeah the light is such that I don't think you're going to see that so I'm going to stop waffling and pointing you at things that you can't actually see and crack on with taking a photo well I think I finally got the image that I wanted the clouds there's a huge bank of cloud just up here and although there's a slight breeze it's just not moving anywhere I decided just to stick with focus stacking and I've done two different compositions both in portrait and landscape format because I'm really not sure which one's going to work best I've previewed them in mono on the back of the camera they work I hope so this morning hasn't now or has now turned out to not be quite such a depressing day I'm currently doing a long exposure in the vain hope that I might get a bit of cloud movement across but that cloud is just sitting there and it's really nice and the reason I'm shooting this way and not that way is because I've got three trees and in photography and home decoration it must be to do with feng shui threes work well odd numbers threes five sevens oh it's very tricky <laughs> making sure you don't fall down one of these crevices but this this rock formation is phenomenal it really is as I say the images are going to be black and white they are going to have a lot of pro post processing applied to them I want a specific look and the cloud cover came across just at the right time I feel so yes a successful morning in the end and the rest of it's a learning curve nice to have a bit of a collaboration with Andy to get his thoughts on why images work why images don't work although even he couldn't understand why stood in the same position I couldn't get the same image that he was getting and I think it is because I set my expectations too high and it's not my usual shoot I just need to check this long exposure <laughs> I'm just setting up for long exposure and he's poddling into the middle which wouldn't be a problem if he was going to stand still but he uh, if he wasn't standing still but he was so this is just a 25 second exposure with the 10 stop I've taken the polarizer off and a 0.6 suspect it's a soft grad and again shooting at 14 seconds that's done yeah there's not just not quite enough cloud movement to pick anything up but yeah I'm 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 stuck I have my feet in a position where I can't go anywhere hold on a second I could be about to um I don't want to put any pressure on the tripod oh oh that's better <laughs> yeah good morning definitely now I know where to come definitely somewhere I should be returning to but I'm really hoping this image works out in, in mono it certainly appears to be doing that on the back of the screen I know I haven't shown you a huge amount it's been quite difficult walking along these rocks is tricky but I hope you've enjoyed it it was something different from the seascapes and I will catch up with you guys next Sunday. Bye for now.